Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following message that you're going to be listening to, it is a narration of a message that I received. The narration reads like this. Hello, my brother, how are you? Can you please post my own story? I want to confess that what I did, yes, what I did led to the death of my brother's child, my elder brother's child. And by the time that my brother's child passed away, there was a charm that I had been given. This charm, I had actually made an oath that unless I had released this oath, then the person who was going to be sick at that time was going to die. And I could not do that at that time when I had that my my brother's child was sick and I could not release this charm because I was afraid that maybe if I was going to release this charm, then my brother was actually going to do to use these rituals on me because I thought that my brother was actually a ritualist. As a family, we had believed that my brother was a ritualist. It was because the reason as to why we believed that he was a ritualist, it was because of the money that he had suddenly got. My brother, he woke up rich. The money had just appeared from nowhere. Well, it happened that one time my own child fell ill and I got so nervous and I thought that maybe my brother was about to sacrifice my own child. Me and my wife, we traveled from South Africa. We rushed back home. And when we rushed back home, we were visiting an, a, a lot of traditional healers as well as prophets. When we went to this other prophet, this prophet then said, you woman, he was pointing at my wife. He, he then said that I can see that one of your relatives is the one that is making this child to suffer. And this relative of my wife, the charm that he had, it is called Gonda, Gondwa Waturikwa, in which he transforms himself and he will become a rat. So then he would enter into any house, any house that he would enter into. He would actually perform what they call sex magic with whomever he would be lasting after at that time. So when I heard this story, even though it was the truth that this man was the one that was making my child to suffer, but I chose not to believe that because already in my mind I had my own wish. These are the consequences of just presuming that this person is my witch. You need to know for a fact that this person that you believe is bewitching you is indeed the person that is bewitching you. Because when that prophet told me that it is not your elder brother who is bewitching you, but it is your wife's uncle who is causing all of these things to happen to your family, I refused. I refused in my heart, even though I never revealed it to my wife that I, I do not believe that your uncle is the one who is causing our daughter to be sick like this me and my me and my siblings we used to gossip a lot about my brother it was like we hated him a lot and one thing that we didn't understand about my brother was that this brother of mine he was with me here in south africa and we used to do the same job we used to suffer this brother of mine he didn't have any skills at all whereby we can say with all the skills that he had he had become rich overnight our family, our family is just a poor family. So how did he get so rich? Because in our entire family history, there is no one amongst my own relatives that he has ever gotten rich out of nowhere. So when we saw that this is what had happened, we then chose to confront my brother. We confronted my brother about this issue. We asked him and we said, brother, where did you get this money from? And he could not respond to my question. He could not tell us where he had gotten this money from. He just remind, he just he just remained quiet and he played innocent. And after that family meeting, we then started saying, You see, you see, this man he is an evil man. I was tired. I wanted revenge. I was looking for his blood. I wanted to end his life because I didn't want him to sacrifice my own child. And I wanted to show him that being a ritualist, it has its own disadvantages. It will never benefit you. I wanted his own tokoloshi, the evil demons that he had gotten from that traditional healer of his. I wanted those demons to destroy him first and to destroy his family afterwards. And I didn't want them to touch my own family. Family. When we left home and returned back to South Africa, in my heart, I felt that there was this hatred, this deep hatred that was growing in my heart towards my elder brother. I hated him so much for being a ritualist and I hated him for being so rich and not wanting to reveal his true source of wealth. 
and my brother. When we returned here, that was when we heard that my child had fell ill and I was ready for war. There was this other time, my brother, that when we were at this other church conference, whilst we were at that church conference, there was this other prophet. This prophet, my brother, he did a lot of miracles that were more like magic. After that conference, I approached that prophet and I told him that I wanted him to assist me in the future, knowing that I was fighting against my brother. I told him that I wanted him to have sort of like a hedge around my house so that when the witch will try to come and attack me, the witch will never be able to attack me. Unfortunately, my brother, I was about to perform some dangerous prayers against a man who was innocent. What had happened to my brother was that there was one politician in our country. He refused to tell me the name of that politician who had approached him and told him that since he was a nobody, he wanted to start a company in his name. Then this politician was going to run that company from behind so that people won't recognize that this company, it belongs to this big politician. That is how he had managed to make so much money overnight. He told me this story one day. Uh, when we were just driving, he told me that, my brother, this story that I am about to share with you, you cannot share with the rest of the relatives because it is something that is not supposed to be revealed to anyone. But I have decided to tell you what happened, my brother, is that there is this politician. This politician is quite a big man. He chose me so that I can be more like his runner, whereby he will be using my name for his businesses and he will be getting all of the money. My brother then told me that usually this politician actually gives him a, lot, a large sum of money so that he can invest that money as he pleases. But he has to make sure that when this politician wants the money back, then he can return the money back to that politician. When my brother told me this story, I then realized that this is what I had done. I had done such an evil thing and there was no more turning back because his child was already dead. And the rituals that I did, my brother, is that after the conference, after I had raised enough money, I went to that prophet's, that red garment prophet's house. I lied to my wife that I wanted to visit this other friend of mine, but I went to that prophet's house. The prophet told me that the prayer that we were going to do, it was a dangerous prayer that will be aimed at all of my enemies. Any enemy of mine that he had once done an evil thing to me, the enemy of mine was going to suffer so much on that day. So when we left this prophet's homestead, we actually had a pick and a shovel. That prophet then told me that I had to dig up enough sand so that we can create something that looked like a small grave. It, wasn't, it was not a grave as such, but one that looked like a grave. The man then handed me a hunting knife that he was holding. After he had handed me that hunting knife, he told me that I had to lay it on top of that mock-up grave three times until I had created something that looked like a spiritual triangle. I then said, what am I supposed to do after that? Because he said that I want you to make this grave go wet. I then said, man of God, how am I going to make this grave go wet? Because... I do not have any water. Why didn't you tell me to fetch water from your homestead? He then said, you are a grown-up man. You know what you are supposed to do. You are no longer a child. So I then opened up the zipper of my trousers and I took out my manhood and I started to urinate on top of that grave until it was a little bit wet. That was when that prophet told me that, I was supposed to stab that grave with that knife that I was holding. I then stabbed that grave with a knife and he said that we were supposed to leave it there. He was, going, he was the one who was going to come and collect it. We then returned back to that prophet's place and after we had spoken about general stuff and he was telling me that when I had returned back to South Africa, I was supposed to look for some customers for him. He said that he specializes in breaking up people's homes. He said if you meet up with any lady that is trying to steal another woman's husband, you can refer her to me because that is what I know best. I know how to break up marriages and he wanted some customers here in South Africa. Well, when I came here, I, I then forgot about him because this war was already done. Then the dreams started coming to me. These are the dreams that I started having. These dreams I would, that I would have, I would dream of my grandfather who kept on complaining to me that the thing that I had done it was truly evil. 
I was not supposed to do it, and my grandfather told me over and over again that I had to release the spell that I had cast upon my brother's child, but I refused until I started getting some prophecies at each and every church where we used to go to. When the prophet would be praying for us, the prophet will say to me, I want you to release this charm, this charm that you are using. It is an evil charm, but I could not release this charm because I was scared that my brother was an evil ritualist. I was scared that my brother's intentions was to sacrifice the whole bloodline. So I kept on holding on to those charms that I had. Brother Nashi, I refused until I had received the sad news that my brother's child had gotten so sick. The child had just collapsed at school and then when we returned back to Zim, that was when the child passed away. During the child's funeral, I was so depressed because I knew that I was the one who had done such an evil act. I kept on reminding myself that the reason as to why all these people were gathered in a single place, it was all because of me. But this secret, I cannot tell anyone this secret. I have decided to keep this secret locked up in my heart. Even my wife does not even know that this is what I did. This secret, I have been keeping it for a very long time. I then decided to speak with that prophet. After I had spoken with that prophet, that prophet then started insulting me. He insulted me so much and he told me that I was not a man. If I was a man enough, I was going to stop wasting his time and come to his compound so that we can discuss this issue like men. When he told me to come to his compound, I was scared to go and meet with him face to face because I knew that this man, the way that he is powerful, maybe he was going to do something evil to me. He then said, you are scared. You are scared to come and face me. He then blocked me. So my brother, this is where I am right now. I feel so saddened about the passing away of my brother's child. Dear listeners, right there was a message that I received and that was the narration of that uh, message. Yo, can you imagine? 